All right, guys, we are back. So here's the thing. I, I, as the ardent Ohio State fan, I will tell you, <laughs> I think that it was a touchdown. We're talking about the the, the touchdown where Denzel Burke had great, uh, great um, positioning on the receiver and then in the end zone came away with the ball. I, I, one, I watched the replay, the slow-mo replay play about 10 times. And I legitimately couldn't tell like whether it truly was or wasn't. But I, the, when I, when we got the wire cam, it did look like he crossed over the threshold with the ball before the, the ball changed hands. So I, I, I don't know where you felt you were on that one, but once I saw the wire cam, I really do think it was a touchdown for Michigan as much as it pains me to say. Yeah, I mean, it's always hard when you're looking at that stuff in slow-mo anyway. Like, we always, you know, that's always a gripe with people is when you slow everything down, you can have, you can complain about anything being what it really was called in the field. Um, I, I think at the time, I kind of felt like it could, like, it was one of those things where it could have gone either way, I think, and mm -hmm. the call in the field was a touchdown. So you're hard-pressed to overturn it in that moment, especially, like, in a game of this magnitude, you called it a touchdown. It was so, so close. I don't like, I, I like, there's going to be a lot of things people look back on this game and gripe about. That's pretty low on the list for me. Nick. Like that's maybe the best way I can put it is like, yeah, could it have maybe been called an interception and he didn't have total control? Sure. I like, I, I guess Ohio state fans have a point there, but I I'm not sitting here today at, or at the end of this game, looking back like, well, that was, that was it. That's, that's why they lost this game. Like, no, there's a bunch of other things that I'm griping about way, way more than that, and I think the fact, like I mentioned last segment, the fact that they called that consistently throughout the game softens the blow of that as well. And Ohio State kind of got it one in their favor, obviously on the last drive where you were trying to set yourself up to go down and score with the Julian Fleming one, because if he that could have probably gone either way too. It was pretty close, but he did take the two steps, and I think it was a very similar situation there. So I, I I'm not mad about it as much as maybe some people might be. So two other people that I think um, people that that I do think just didn't have the best days of the office. I don't want to say cost the game because, again, I think this loss is on Ryan Day and it, the margins were so slim in this. Uh, I don't care. You lost for the third straight time and you had opportunities to win this game. and You didn't. Now, that being said, uh, Jesse Murko had a awful day at the at the office um, where it just felt like every other punt or not every other punt, every punt early in the game set yeah, Michigan exactly. up in, in the perfect field position. And I also think like a Mecca Abuka, there was the, uh, what was it the first drive where he had the first down to the 40 and just dropped it. And then I, I tend to think it was on Kyle McCord um, the throw over the top in the second half where uh, Abuka got hit. I, I think Kyle McCord put him in an awful situation at the same time, in that in this game, you can't have two drops. You have to come down with that one. Your your hand, your hands were were on it. You you come down with that, and all of a sudden we forget about that first drop. Yeah, I mean that's one of those. It's that's always going to be one of those ones. Where I'm sure the receiver is going to say I should have caught it, but I do think you're right that that Ryan, that I almost said Ryan Day. We're just we we just want to blame Ryan Day for everything at this point. Uh, where McCord obviously left him out to dry. Um, that, that's one of those things like Tom Brady talks about that a lot where actually, I think he talked about it this week when he was, you know, bitching about how the NFL is not the same anymore and how back in my day doing like a back in my day type moment there, um, where he said, you know, I, I knew when Ray Lewis was over the middle on defense, I couldn't throw, I had to throw it to a certain spot to a receiver. So he didn't get absolutely murdered. And that's basically what Kyle McCourt did. He let, he let a Ibuka get murdered by throwing mm -hmm. it where he threw it. So, and I said it earlier, like that was, he threw it too late. He was open on the seam route. Yeah. A guy like CJ Stroud recognizes, okay, he's going to break free here and I'm going to drop it in before the safety gets there. But he threw it too late. And that's, again, you talk about it being a game of inches. Those are the moments where it is. And when McCord's not able to make those plays or those throws for you, that ultimately ends up being a difference in a game. So, yeah, I, 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 I you know, I, I don't want to harp on certain people, but I, I think people. it wasn't a great day for either of those guys as well. I agree. Um, and I do think, too, I don't – because, listen, Jim Knowles, night and day performance from last year to this year with his defense. And you could tell all season their big focus was we're not – they keep Josh Proctor sort of back as a as a center fielder where they're mm -hmm. like, hey, we're not going to get beat on the big plays this year. 
and they didn't give up a lot of big plays in this game today. There was a couple bigger hitter, big hitter ones with the what was the tight end's name from Michigan? I forget it off the top of my head, but I, I guy, can't. But that kid's a unit. Yeah, Good I mean, God. well, and and they talked about it on the broadcast, like Joel Klatt said in speaking with the with the with the Wolverines coaching staff this week, they felt like they had an advantage with him, and I think they used it to the, they clearly used it throughout the game. Um, but yeah, I think Loveland. that. Yeah, that's it. No, 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 no. It was the it was the other guy, Loveland. Oh no, maybe it was Loveland. No, it, it was. Be. Yeah. Okay. Colton um, Loveland. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think I think Jim Knowles did a good job of preventing the big play, and I, I like I'm not putting this loss on him because the defense generally did a good job at you know pr- limiting the damage from from Michigan, especially when you're putting a short field on that first touchdown drive where you where McCourt throws the interception. But I was kind of waiting for him to do the same thing as Ryan Day, which was. When are you going to be a little bit over aggressive just a couple times to see if you can tip this game in your favor? That was kind of what I was waiting for. And I understood like late, late on that last drive. Well, I actually on that last drive, I thought he had to be, there was moments where I thought he had to be. Cause I was like, you might not even get the ball back here. Like you got to try to make a play and do something to disrupt JJ McCarthy or whatever, because if you don't get the ball back game's over and he didn't do it all game. There wasn't like a, some special blitz dialed up or anything. I don't know. I, I felt like, and I don't know if that's just a reflection of the way Ryan Day calls a game. So he was, it kind of trickles down to your whole coaching staff and everyone was being conservative, but I was kind of waiting for just like one or two moments where, where even Jim Knowles did something different and it didn't seem like it came for that, for him either. Well, and can we actually put up Perk's comment from earlier? It was like, I think 325 is when he put this up talking and this before I think we even started. And he, he said, uh, defense let us down three years in a row. And I got to be honest with you, one, um, Michigan ended up having, I think, eight minutes more of clock time than you offensively. To me, that's not on that. that, That's that's really not on Jim Knowles. That was on, you know, that really happened. Ohio State, I think, was even with them until I want to say that last drive. And not just that. Ohio State started the game with two, three and outs. So they put a, a. a team that I think was ninth in scoring in the first quarter all season long in Michigan, they they were like right where they needed to be, and that first touchdown came off the Kyle McCord interception. So like I thought they were a little rusty towards kind of the end of the first uh, quarter after Michigan had already scored, but like once you get into the second half, like guys, when when all of a sudden your defense has to get back out there because you had another three and out or because of the big um, Abuka. Th- uh, drop or the McCord, you know, force, whatever you want to say it is. Like, I just don't think the defense was put in a great position. And I think some of that That's is, fair. I think, I think, I think Ryan Day had two different opportunities to run the ball with that same kind of power and precision that we saw on the, on the first Buckeyes drive of the third uh, quarter. And they could have done that after the, the uh, turnover that, didn't happen right after the turnover that led to the touchdown for Michigan to start the game. Um, you end up settling for a field goal there by Jaden fielding. And they could have done that in the second quarter where all of a sudden, like Michigan's up what 14 to three at that point. And it's like, okay, take a time, bring your kids down, focused on Travion and just get your offensive line moving to get that physicality going. And I think they probably did it a quarter too late. And I just, I, I think Ryan really, and this is where I think This goes back to the idea of Ryan Day doesn't have an identity as a coach because he tries to straddle, well, we're going to play time of possession football and we're going to run over you and we're going to go ahead and do all those cute things with with pace. And both things work. (laughs) The the Buckeyes scored today both ways, right? Like on the the, the drive that led up to – which drive am I thinking about here? Was it – Oh gosh, math is hard for me. They went hurry up on one drive that, that got them points immediately. Okay. And then they clearly slowed it down at the beginning of the third quarter and got points. The problem is you can't ping back and forth of those when you're when the opposition clearly has a game plan. Yeah. And they clearly have a persona and a style of play that that they fall back on. You can either match them and decide you're going to run and try and wear down their defense, or you can just try and tire them out by going hurry up. And it, like, I think Ryan caught in between, well, I really want to go hurry up, but I don't trust the quarterback. And well, they're, they're getting a couple stops here and there. So well, maybe we won't go back to the run. At some point, you just need to lock into something and just yeah. go for it. And I, can I just real quick though, I do want to get to one thing. 
that I think is is goofy. All these John Cooper comparisons to me are asinine. John Cooper started his career. And guys, I've spent the whole 40 <laughs> minutes destroying Ryan Day. So this is not a defense of Ryan Day. It is if you like John Cooper is for this rivalry the worst head coach since before Woody Hayes. That's how bad John Cooper was. He started his career out with six straight non-wins. There were five losses and a tie. And then he proceeded, even after that, he became uh, he went on and, and lost to them, I think, three straight times in the mid-90s. So for me, Ryan Day has already beat Michigan, and every one of these games have been close, where some of those games I talked about with John Cooper were blowouts. So I understand the impulse to rush to John Cooper. He's not John Cooper. John Cooper did not win against Michigan until year seven in Columbus. And also, John Cooper did not have the kind of consistent national success that Ryan Day did, having them on the 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 in the playoff window every single year. So, like Ryan Day can be bad, and John Cooper can still be worse. Now, yeah. all this being said, I, I think we are at the highest level of DefCon with Ryan Day. I don't know he does get fired. I don't know he should get fired, but like. I got to be honest with you guys. It's it's now a conversation, and it wasn't before today for me. I think what's what's going to be so hard with this, Nick, is, like I said, the context of a lot of things that just surround Ohio State, but also a lot of things that surround college football that are changing as well. Because on one hand, yes, he's lost to Michigan three straight years. Um, but if Jim Harbaugh leaves – what is that? I mean, not, not to say that like you keep a guy around because like, oh, look, that coach is finally gone. That owns him. Now, now, he'll, now he'll be good. Like that shouldn't be a reason you keep him around. But I'm just saying like there's context there. Like if, if Jim Harbaugh goes to the NFL, what does that mean for, for Ryan Day in terms of maybe getting back into this rivalry and being able to win again? Um, you have the fact that Gene Smith is, is retiring at the end of the season. Now, on one hand, Gene Smith seems to be a Ryan Day advocate. So he's losing somebody in his corner who has his back. So that's not necessarily good for maybe next year. But is is Gene Smith on the way out the door going to head up a, a new head coaching search and be the guy who, like, if, if he picks the wrong coach, now his legacy is, okay, well, you uh, you picked, you you left us with a terrible coach that's even worse than Ryan Day. I, like, I don't know. I don't know where his head's at with all that. I guess ultimately his job is going to be whatever the board of directors decides to do because they're the ones who make these decisions um, and the boosters and the people with the money. But uh, yeah, like he is that going to be what he wants to do before he leaves? There's also the context of the playoff expanding to 12 teams next year and say what you want about Ryan day. I know he lost to Georgia in the end, but like he coached his ass off in that game against Georgia. And I think that's still something on people's minds that are like, when he gets to the playoffs, He's generally played good games. Like, yeah, he got roasted by Bama the one year, but Bama was just out of this world that season. It was unbelievable. Well, I, like, I don't that. know. I don't know that. And that was a weird year because of the COVID and uh, COVID and all that. But I, I just – I don't know, like, with all the context, if he actually gets fired. I think that's the big dilemma here surrounding him is, yeah, you could. I, I do, I do want to ask this because we're getting some people commenting who seem – it looks like they're Michigan fans, rightfully so. I, I understand why they're coming to chirp in the – the chat of a Ohio State podcast, but I, I can't do really want... be mad. I just yeah, I, I can't do that either. Won. Like, hey, good, yeah. yeah, good. Congratulations to you. Thanks for being here. We appreciate the views. Um, but I, I do, I like the fact that that Michigan fans, because because here's the thing I think about Nick. I, the thing I compare this to being a Boston Red Sox fan. Um, I love that the Yankees keep investing in Aaron Boone because I think Aaron Aaron Boone is a buffoon of a, of a manager. And I always say to my friends that are Yankees fans, I'm like. I hope they keep Aaron Boone for the next decade because that guy ain't it. And we got mm -hmm. Michigan fans chirping in the chat saying, or in the comments, I should say, saying, yeah, go ahead and give Ryan Day an extension. Go ahead and keep him for a long period of time. Does that weigh into this conversation at all? Like the fact that Michigan thinks that they just absolutely can just keep beating you with Ryan Day because they're in his head. How much does that weigh into all this? So there's a lot of context it, it, here. Real I quick, real quick. It doesn't. All right. <laughs> they won a football game. They're chirping. This is what you do when you've won three straight games in a gigantic rivalry. And I actually want to say something because Radu but you don't, Twitter, but, but, but I'm taking it beyond just the fan base part of it, though, and like the chirping. And I'm asking, like, is there a really – can you really say at this point that Michigan is just straight up in Ryan Day's head? Like, they own him. 
Um, or is it just sure. strictly Jim Harbaugh? And if he leaves, then I don't, it won't no, matter I, anymore. I think Ryan Day is in Ryan Day's head. <laughs> I think I I do like I like this idea that oh Jim Harbaugh no Ryan Day and Jim Harbaugh hate each other, so do I think that adds pressure to this? And do I think now like do I think Ryan Day has any more grasp on what it takes to win consistently against Michigan than he did uh, four years ago? No, he hasn't learned his lesson. He hasn't learned to coach with balls. Urban coach with balls. And you can say, well, Tressa was more conservative. Yes, Tressa was consistently conservative. Ryan Day is neither consistently aggressive nor yeah, he uh, has, conservative. He has no identity. So, but like Radu on Twitter James, said. Again, James Franklin, same thing. But Radu they're, they're, they're one and the same. But Radu on uh, the comments, not on Twitter, you know, said Day lost to an interim coach today. He doesn't win any big games. And it's like, guys, he beat Clemson in 2020. That's a pretty big game. He did beat Michigan in 2019. He beat Notre Dame earlier this year on the road in South Bend. So the problem isn't he doesn't win big games. The problem right now is he hasn't won a national title and he hasn't beat Michigan since 2019. So I think I think that like to me it's not he doesn't win big games. It's he hasn't won enough big games here recently. Like yeah. it's what have you done I, for me lately? Pretty, pretty I'll, I'll I'll lose to Notre Dame. Give me Michigan. Right, you can lose, although nobody ever really does to Penn State, but give me the national championship. So, you know, to me, for Ryan Day, next year becomes, and I do think there's going to be a next year. I think all this Bally, who I think the only way he really gets fired is if through back channels, Mike Vrabel tells people, I'm coming to Columbus. Because, well, this is this is the next part of the conversation I think we need to have is. The people there's there's a t listen. We're seeing it in the comments. We're seeing it on social media. Whole bunch of people. They got their torches lit. They're waiting for the bus to arrive back in Columbus. They're going to show up with their pitchforks. They're they're ready to run Ryan Day out of town. So that's the question. The question is, okay, if Ryan Day, if you want Ryan Day fired, what is who are you replacing them with? Is, is it strictly Mike? I, I think Vrabel is an is an obvious. An obvious option, and I think most fans would jump at the idea of saying, okay, if, if Mike Vrabel is, is out there and he's available, then yeah, I want Mike Vrabel. Um, is Luke Fickle an option? Is it, it like is is, is is a long it's probably a long shot, but uh is 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 it possible that you you go you, you tap somebody on the the coaching staff? Like I I, I don't know. Um yeah, I know. Real quick, I'm, we're not doing the Hartline thing. I like Brian Hartline a lot, but I think the yeah, Ryan that's where I was Day, going with this. I don't know why I didn't well, just say Brian Hartline, but <laughs> <laughs> respect for all the other coaches, Jim Knowles and whatnot. <laughs> but I, well, here's what I'll say: This is not against Brian Hartline, who I think is a future coaching star in the making. What Ryan Day is showing you is that Ohio State is not a first-time head coaching job. So Ryan Day, guys, he's like 93 percent of the coach you want. The problem is. You need him to be 7% more. And that takes time. That takes opportunities. That takes repeated chances against Michigan. You have to learn as a coach to get better. And I think he's learned in some ways. And like this year, I think he just got caught in the perfect vortex of he didn't address the quarterback position properly. And then in that specific game, he got caught between, well, who am I? He had some sort of existential thing. So all all, all due respect to Brian Hartline. But yeah. go to Central Michigan. I'm, and I'm, I'm throwing. Go I'm to throwing Cincinnati Radu's, first. I'm throwing. Go Radu's to Notre Dame first. Yeah. Go to Purdue first. Go somewhere else first. Prove to me you can win. It goes. Uh, thank you, Radu. Yes, this is not. A, yeah, th that's why I'm throwing it up there because he agrees with you that it's not a first time job. Well, hey, you mentioned Notre Dame. Is Marcus Freeman an option? I don't know. Like, I, I, I'm just throwing names out there. But it, what's interesting too is like, you mentioned Ryan Day being 93 percent of what you want. Because you could look around college football and you could probably find somebody who can do what Ryan Day's doing for you right now, which is wins you a lot of games in the Big Ten, but loses to Michigan. Like, is it just flat out time to try it with somebody else because you could get the exact same result with somebody else? Or is it truly, okay, give Ryan Day another shot to see if he can turn it around next year? Well, okay, so I guess there's two ways to look at this. Oh, by the way, can I answer? I just want to circle back to the the Jim Harbaugh living rent free in in Ryan Day's head. No, he lives rent free in the heads of Ohio State fans, and that's to me why I think you could see that's the only plausible reason Ryan Day could get fired is this weird panic of you're never going to beat Michigan again. So I think I think Jim Harbaugh lives rent free 
in uh, in 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 Ohio State fans' heads right now. Now circle back. There's this line of, well, if you fire Ryan Day, who are you going to get to replace him that's better? Which, honestly, to me, that shouldn't factor into the equation. Like, if you're thinking to yourself, well, now might be our only chance to get Mike Vrabel, so we have to fire Ryan Day. No, you don't. There's no, you like, it's not about the coach. It's about the coach and the situation they walk into and the support they have, right? So, like, if you could get Mike Vrabel this offseason, that's great. But you don't just fire Ryan Day to hire Mike Vrabel. You go through an honest-to-God coaching search. And the, yeah. the same is true, though. Like, Ryan Day, if you think he's not the right coach, you shouldn't be fretting over, but who are we going to hire? It's Ohio State, okay? Yeah. Like, I'm on the fence about firing Ryan Day. This game feels like a fireable game. But I'm on the fence about firing Ryan Day because I think I don't want to fall into the same trap I think everybody else is, which is overreacting. But you mentioned Marcus Freeman. You mentioned Luke Fickle. You mentioned Mike Vrabel. It's Ohio State. If you go out and say, hey, job opening, you can have about any coach you want. Like, you don't even have to be realistic. Like, listen, it's not realistic that a, a NFL head coach in the cushiest job with ultimate job security, it's not realistic that Mike Vrabel would be like, you know what I want? More work, more horse crap, have to learn a whole <laughs> new job, and have to go ahead and deal with boosters. It's not like that shouldn't be realistic, but it is because he's Mr. Ohio State and you're Ohio State. So, th- so like, on one hand... Yeah, yeah, how how soon until... uh. How soon until they start asking Mike Vrabel in his press conferences about if he has any interest in the Ohio State job? You I don't think know that's how, coming up this week? You think that's going to happen? <laughs> how soon will Anthony Lima and Ben Axelrod be attending <laughs> the virtual the press, press conferences. conferences for the Tennessee well, Titans? I, and, and I'll I tell say you, too, that'll be the day. I want to I want to say, too, like, I asked the question about, um, you know, who do you replace him with? I didn't ask that as, like, yeah, I'm I'm worried about who you replace him with. I'm asking it sincerely as like, okay, what are the options out there that you think would, would make sense? And I do think well, no. I do think that obviously one of those is Rabel. I think that obviously makes a ton of sense. And the I think there's other is I think it's a common retort of people yeah. trying to defend Ryan Day. And it's like, well, who are you gonna get? Like, that's a stupid rebuttal. That's not a defense of Ryan Day. <laughs> it's just, it's, yeah. it's a fear based response. And, and like you honestly, can, you can get pretty much any, uh, any coach at, to, to come to Ohio State that you want, other than maybe like Nick Saban or, you know, some of these other people. <laughs> Wait, real quick. Can we get to BB's comment here? Because yeah. I actually kind of love this. And I can't tell if BB is a Michigan fan or an Ohio State fan. But you get bet uh, you get beat by the better team, and you want to fire the coach. Try getting better. I actually don't hate this, by the way. I kind of like. I kind of would like to see Ohio State but and Ryan Day dig deep. On one hand, though, isn't isn't uh, well, I'll say this: isn't sort of the retort to that though that Ohio State kind of was better these last couple years. Like, look at the rosters they've had, Nick. They had C.J. Stroud and Marvin Harrison Jr. in a mech. They have all the top receivers in the damn country. They got Travion Henderson. They got all these great running backs. Like, they have anybody that you could possibly want up and down the roster, and they're still losing to them. So I don't know if it's just trying to shoot up, like, get better. At the end of the day, like, when you have two good teams, a lot of times it does come down to coaching. I, you know, you kind of know where I stand on this. Like, I, I, I'm, I'm on the fence with you. Like, I'm not sure if Ryan Day's the guy long term. I'm really not. But I'm also not fully like, yeah, you know what? Just burn his house down and get him out of town. Like, let's 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 get rid of him. Because I don't know what the right answer is. But I'm also like, I, I'm just playing devil's advocate for the people who are on the side of fire on day because all these excuses that we can make for him, he also has had plenty of like retorts back in his favor of like, well, why didn't it happen this time? And why didn't it happen that time? And what's wrong? Like, how do you get all these top recruits and then you still go out and you lose to Michigan? It's 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 mind boggling on some level. I get that. So what I would say to what you just said is it's the best way of putting it. I dude, I totally blanked. I totally I had like this great thought and it just completely farted. I basically just Ryan Day. <laughs> well, okay. So when it comes to Ryan Day, when it comes to him as coach, you look at this and you say, the last two years, Ohio State was the better team. This year, Ohio State and Michigan were very comparable teams. And I think I think the la- the previous two years, I think Ryan Day was guilty of roster hubris. This year, 
I think Ryan Day was guilty of, quite frankly, just not having the balls to win this game, this specific game. And so I think that's what scares me about it, is it's like I don't look at the through line for all three losses to be the same thing. He had an opportunity. Listen, you started the game. It definitely seems like he took a different approach to this year than he did previous years. Like, it wasn't like, all right, we're just going to go out and hustle them because we're the better team anymore. I think that is definitely a fair – I was almost said criticism, but that's not a criticism. I I think it's fair to say that Day took a different approach to the game this year, and that I think is notable. But it still gives you the same result. And like I said, when you're – when you, this is my thing with college football. Like, I tell people all the time, for me – college football is better than the NFL because I think just like the, the, the aura around it with the fans and just the the games, every moment is so tense and there's so many different things and it's not a perfect product. Like you, you saw today, you get kickers missing field goals in the NFL. It's like almost automatic. You can go get it. You can go make yourself a sandwich when the field goal kickers on the field. Like, I don't know. There's just some beauty in the imperfections of it is why I love it. And on top of that, I also always say, because people, people throw back at me when I say that, well, you get all these blowouts and it's not really fun. Okay, fair. But I think when you get two evenly matched teams in college football, those games are always more epic to me than any like NFL Sunday games that you've ever put on the slate to me. That, that's just my opinion on it. And that's where I sit. And when you realize that and you look at these it, it, the intricacies of these matchups sometimes when you get two evenly matched teams, which like we already talked about, I think today we saw two very evenly matched teams, similar styles and everything. When you talk about that, it does come down to coaching. And so that's where I think the the roadblock is for a lot of fans. It's like, listen, Ryan Day does a lot of things well. We have we obviously have said and we agree he doesn't necessarily have an identity offensively. Sometimes he's too aggressive or sometimes he's aggressive, sometimes he's not. It, when it comes down to those moments and those singular times in games where you're winning, you're trying to win the big one against a, an opponent that's on the same playing field as you or in that same aura as you in terms of being a great team, what is the difference between winning and losing? And if it's your head coach, I can understand that. Like Ohio state has a standard that they're trying to meet. So I think that is why it's, it's, it's not a cut and dry conversation because there's a lot of reasons to say, yeah, keep Ryan day. And we've laid out a lot of those, the context around what's going to happen next year. Like, like next year we might be Ohio. He might lose to Michigan again and they could still make the playoff. They will probably still make the playoff. And then guess what? If they go out and they go and they go to the national championship game, he's probably safe again. And so, again, like the, the context matters here, but I just don't know like what the full-fledged answer is because I do think there's probably a lot of coaches out there that could do exactly what Ryan Day's doing because you lure any great coach to Ohio State. I want to know like what's the one that gives you that 7% that you're talking about. Is it Mike Vrabel? If so, great, which means you're not firing him today because you got to wait until – you got to get – you if you if you have your eyes on Mike Vrabel, you have to be a hundred percent certain that he's done in Tennessee. Like that has to be clear cut to you. Cause if that's, if you're going for the big fish and you don't land the big fish, then you're, you're shit out of luck. So I'm with you. Like you don't just fire him to hope that you get Mike Vrabel. You got to know what's happening, but I, well, I, I don't know. Well, here's what, here's what I'll tell you. Um, the nasty part of the NFL is a lot of coaches already understand where they're going to be next year. True. Right, Bill Belichick has a pr- like about ninety percent sure whether he'll be in New England, whether he'll be, um, I don't know, doing the uh, walk of shame out of another Boston Cougars um, apartment and get caught on the door cam, or whether he'll be in Washington next year. And yeah. so I, th- oh. I think, I think there's an indication. I'm sorry, not externally, but there absolutely are you know, kind of overtures. And he, listen, here's as I'm on the fence, may I just give. All Ohio State fans who are pissed about this loss, and I started this by by ripping it, Ryan Day a new butthole. So I understand that I am one of you, okay? But it is really easy to – it's not about, well, who's going to coach this team? No, no, no. It's about can you get the right person to coach the team if you fire Ryan Day? Yeah. And that's not an easy answer. It is, I think it is much easier to take a great coach. And well, let's say, let's say Ryan Day's a Really good coach, but not a great coach. Okay. He's a great CEO, but maybe you should give up play calling, right? Like we, we can quibble over what he is, but let's say he's a really good coach, not a great coach. I think it's equally easy to go from a really good coach to an average coach than it is to maybe go from a really good coach to a great coach. Again, that is not why you why you don't fire the man. But I just think there's a lot of people throwing this around like it's the easy card to play 
There's nothing easy yeah. about where Ohio no, State no, is. I agree. The gap agree. between them and where they want to be is actually pretty nil. So the question you're asking yourself is, do we just feel like that gap is wide or is that gap really truly just a quarterback? Or is it really truly just getting Ryan Day more help or changing the terms or whatever? Is this, and I think is that's this like LeBron James, he needs more help. Well, but I think, but I, <laughs> good one. But I do think that's like the catch 22 of what boosters has to be, have to be asking themselves. And this is why you don't do it today on the tarmac, like Lane Lane Kiffin, and you don't do it for several weeks. Listen, search your feelings. You will know what, what is to be true when you search your feelings. But beyond that, you need to really kind of logically think about this if you're Ohio State. Fans are not going to be logical. But I think because Gene Smith is is going to be retiring in June, I think the worst thing you could do is is Gene Smith hiring the next head coach and then that we it's 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 the tale oldest time. That new AD is going to come in and be like, "Well, but I didn't hire you." And and we can say, yeah. "Oh no, he won't." Or it doesn't work like that. Or it works that way well, everywhere. Hey, you want to you want to you, you make reference to that as we talk about Mike Vrabel as a potential replacement option if Ryan Day's fired. Same thing applies there, right? They had a new GM come in and ran Carthen last year. If the, the Titans aren't really in the playoff picture right now, that and that's where I think there's probably some intrigue to that storyline is because if the if things continue to go south for the Titans, then yeah, maybe there's a real consideration that they're going to move on from Mike Vrabel because new GM wants to bring in his own head coach. So I, I think that's an interesting conversation too. But you're right. You equate it to the NFL level. Same thing applies if the person didn't hire you, they have no loyalty to you. They might just decide to move on from you. So, all yeah. right. With all of this going on, we still have the Michigan panic meter, which will be uh, raised to half mast in, in in honor of this Ohio State loss. We have to get to love it, like it, love it, like it, it, and leave it. Um, if you guys want to drop, can we talk about Marvin comments, Harrison's Heisman op- odds now too? Um, I think it will be a moment for that. Okay. I, I I don't think this game does much for that. No. Well, that's that's why I want to talk about it. Then go ahead. No, no, no. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, in the next segment, we can we can pause and then talk about it in the next segment. All right. Give us your love it, like it, and leave <laughs> it. But first, a, a message from our sponsors. <laughs> 